Surprise, surprise, we got bearded dragons. What's up, snake fans? Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. Today is Monday, but this video will probably go up on Tuesday. We're gonna be looking at that boa litter that we had uh, last week. It seems like uh, that, sh I think all of the babies shed out. I saw a lot of sheds in the uh, incubator, in the, uh, the box I put it. I put all my boas in the incubator for about a week or two after they're born, even though they're born live, just so that they can be in a controlled temperature environment with high, high humidity, so they shed really well. And if they have a little bit of uh, egg yolk belly, they'll make sure they absorb that. Sometimes if it's too cold in a tub, they, they can, I, I've had deaths in the past, and my good friend Mike Weitzman from basically Boas, he gave me that little trick. He said, put them in the incubator, and I always do that. As soon as they're born, it's like they never left their mother's belly. They go right to a wet, damp, you know, uh, warm environment, and they finish their uh, shedding and absorbing and all that stuff. And usually after, once they go through that shed, then they're ready to be set up into a tub. So probably by the end of the week, we'll have them set up. But we're gonna take a look at those and see what we got, try to figure out all the genes in there, because it's a little confusing. Uh, we're gonna continue our training with our Black Dragon water monitor. And I, I got good news. I'm going to be going back to uh, underground reptiles at the end of the week again. Uh, bringing them a bunch of snakes and uh, hopefully we'll do a, a part two on that tour. Or part three on the tour, I should say. So I'm super psyched about that. All right, let's go into the snake room and see what we got today. Surprise, surprise. We got bearded dragons. That's right. We, we, I did a trade with a snake and this uh, one of the uh, people that I was dealing with uh, had some beards and... Something that I would kind of was thinking about getting. Uh, these is a morph known as the Red Monster. Now, these are 50% Red Monsters. It's a it's a line bred trait. It's not like a recessive, incomplete dominant dominant type situation. It's it's a polygenic trait, meaning that multiple genes contribute to the color. Um, and they're bred to they were bred to I guess another you know red line of bearded dragon to kind of prevent the inbreeding effect from happening. And here's a pair we have here. The male is a 50% red monster, also a German red, and it's hypotranslucent. So uh, the translucent gene is uh, makes them have a little more see-through skin. Hypo, obviously, we know reduces melanin. And the female is also a 50% uh, red monster. She's also dark red, and she's het translucent, het hypo. So we got some uh, some good genes here. I'm thinking if these things breed together, we might get some really, really reds. This is probably one of the reddest looking, at least in person, that I've seen uh, bearded dragons. Really nice. And so I was very happy with what I got, to be honest with you. And they seem to like my uh, a little setup we have for them, Pablo and I set up here. We gave him a nice log, a little hide box, and we got him some water bowls over there. We gave him some greens, and I just bought him some crickets. I really don't like feeding insects, to be honest. I hate insects, but I know they need to eat them. So we're going to give them some crickets here, and uh, hopefully they'll eat some of these. Let's see. All right. Is that our male, Pablo, in the back, or the female? The, little, the smaller one. The one with the more red around the face. Yeah, that's our male. He's going right after those crickets. Let's see if the female goes after these crickets. Oh, he's loving the crickets back there, Bob. Oh, there goes the female. Oop, she's chasing him. <laughs> oop, oop. Hopefully he doesn't eat the, uh, the cocoa husk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, they, they're going to have a little, uh, this is enrichment, right? They call it enrichment, hunting. They have the hunting, a little hunting enrichment going on here. They're really not skittish. These, I mean, we don't, we, I, we've only had them a couple of days and they're really pretty pretty cool about this yeah one day you're right all right there's our bearded dragons that we got they're uh, definitely munching down on some crickets there's our male there's our female <laughs> we got to clean we got to clean this thing though what's up guys they're so happy they just ate all their crickets Let's see if i can get a little a little action, this one. What's up, guys? You guys are so cool. These are the reddest 
dragons I've ever seen. Reddest bearded dragons. All right, keep hunting. Keep hunting for your crickets. There's still more left in there. All right, so we lost this bow like, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago. No one that. It's been more, yeah. yeah. I don't, I think this is the one that was more recent. There's, oh, there's okay. two out, but there's oh, one okay. that we haven't seen. And I'm like, I just hit the pile. I walked there. I said, how can we, I'm so shocked that we haven't found this bow. Because usually they get behind the tubs where the heat spot is and they'll push the tubs out, you know, like, like these things out. And this wasn't pushed out, but I, I just started getting into this whole, like, I'm just going to clean these corn snakes. I don't know why, because Pablo usually takes care of this. And sure enough, I'm like, why is this, this thing going back in? And if you come back here and look, look where this thing is wedged in here. This is our bubble paper for shipping. He's right in there. There's my little hypo lavy boy. <laughs> and he was, he's smart because he was right behind the, the bubble paper. So on, you know, just you're walking by, you'd never see it, you know. And there's still one more out, but at least we found this guy. So let's see. He's not going to be happy about me grabbing him, but that's all right. All right. Look at this view. He is cold. So this is a cold room. I'm shocked. Although he was sitting on the heat, mm. I'm surprised he came in this in this room because he's from the other room. But oh, yeah. I guess he figured he was. Uh, maybe it's breeding season. He wanted to chill. He wanted to cool himself down. Maybe he's like, <laughs> Daddy's not cooling me enough. So now he's fr literally freezing. But Bo is like that. Some of these guys. We moved all the super fires in here and the fire diamonds because they like the cold. And I didn't even realize it. Look at him. He's he's fine. He's moving around. He's flicking his tongue. And he is like an icicle. This thing. Because uh, the, the air conditioning vent is right there. It blows right on this uh, on this rack. So we're going to put him back in with the female. And hopefully we'll get some breeding action. All right, we're doing a little black water monitor. Black dragon training, I should say. And we just changed her water and everything. Like that, so she might be a little timid. Let's see if she comes over. I'm going to put my hand in here. I'm going to pull the Kevin McCurley method here. Come on, big girl. Let's see if she comes over. She's usually pretty curious, but I think she probably just changed her water, so I think she was just hanging out in the water a little bit. Let's see if she comes over. She's probably hungry too, because we're supposed to feed her today. Papa's gonna defrost a few quail, thanks mm -hmm. to Tom Crutchfield for the quail idea. Much leaner source of uh, protein. Oh, you don't want to come over? It's weird because she usually always comes right to the door and wants to come right out. She's just chilling. Alright, let's see. I'm gonna step away and see if she comes back to me. Yeah, alright, as soon as I shut the glass, it's like my son. You tell her she can't do something, now she wants to do it. <laughs> I'll see. Right, she's coming over. Let's see. Let me see if I can open up the glass. I'll give her, you got one more shot. One chance. You got to lock these cages to these. these they're like escape artists, these guys. They're very smart. If you don't want to, oops, oops. she's out. You were saying she's she's my son. She wants to do things her way. All right, she's sitting here. You know, I don't feel comfortable like this, but it's okay. I'm going to trust her. I'm not going to make any sudden movements. She's got her now. She's got her hands on my neck, which I'm not too thrilled about. She's got very sharp claws. She's tasting my face. She's right in the back of my head. There you go, yeah. There you go. Pretty cool, right? She did that the other day, too. I think she just wants to feel me out a little bit because she could have jumped off us. She could have jumped off me and she could have just... Bolted out of here. Bolted yeah. out, yeah. She <laughs> literally did a loop. And I thought that was pretty cool. I should have had this thing zipped up a little more. I was, she, did ha she did not put any pressure on my neck. She didn't dig into my neck. She almost knew that she would hurt me. And she went right back into the cage. Look at that. She's, she's fine. That was a good encounter. All right, guys. Um, I want to show you the Onyx bow litter that we had the other day. They all seem to shed out. Some of them are still in the, in the midst of it, but pretty much most of them shed out. Uh, this was an interesting litter because I produced the father of this uh, clutch.
couple years back. And you gotta understand, onyx boas are really, really tiny. I'll show you the, the father after this. He was really small. I can't even believe he got the job done, but that's the nature of these, these boas. They're from Honduras and they're, I call them super dwarfs. Now we do have blood boa in this as well. And they're a little bigger than a Panamanian boa. So these are not quite pure, pure super dwarfs, but they're very small. They stay by and large smaller than most boas do. The interesting thing about this litter is I took the male that was a visual hypo Honduran T-positive, which we call Honduran or T-positive sun glow. Um, he was also one copy of Onyx and he was possible had blood. So I mean, we didn't really know. We were going to try to prove him out and we bred him to his mother who is an Onyx, one copy, triple head blood, Honduran T-positive, and Anery 2. So we got no anneries in here, so that's good. That means the male didn't have anneries. I didn't think he did anyway. I'm not sure if we have any bloods. It doesn't look like it, but we got some cool stuff. So I want to show you this. This is a great project. I know a lot of people are going to be interested in picking up some of these bows. They're going to finally be available, these higher end ones now, because I did produce a decent amount of them. And I still have my holdbacks from the, you know, last year. So let's, uh, let's take a look and see what we got. Let's go to, the, let's go, I call it the dark side first. These are, interesting in that we hit a lot of onyx boas in this whole mix here and you gotta remember onyx is a, 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 a trait that's allelic to leopard so leopard and onyx can produce act like supers that look like each other the difference is that leopards are not that big i mean excuse me leopards are a lot bigger than the onyx boas so this is like a, a, a dwarf locality of and and let's get don't get me wrong leopards are not huge boas but these are way smaller than, than, than leopards. So I like to, you know, mostly keep them. Uh, I don't like to crossbreed them. I bred them once last year as an experiment, but I'll probably keep them pretty pure. So this is a single copy onyx gene. See the striped tail? Um, it's one copy. I don't believe there's any hype on here. It looks like that's pretty much all there is here is just onyx. And you can see the pattern changes here. It's a little darker than normal, but onyx does have red underneath uh, it's dark coloration and that's what you're seeing here i don't believe this is a is a hypo at all now here's another one that has really kind of interesting patterns this is another little higher expression onyx we got to watch these guys because they like to escape you can see all this little like chain link in here and there and that's a lot of darkness there's really no indication of a hypo here so these are both pretty much just single copy onyxes now they could also be possible have blood they could be possible had under and positive because of the parents but we're going to just visually these are plain onyxes now if we go and we pick up another one here and we look at this guy you can see he's a lot darker now and this is starting to look very leopardish to me if you ask this one's way dark now when i look at these and i compare them wait where's the other one did i did i did one get away from us yep one's in the garbage pail <laughs> you gotta keep an eye on these things now, if you look at all these guys together, this one's a lot darker. So now it makes me wonder that if this possibly might have the hypo gene in it, and this one doesn't. Because if you look at this one, you see how dark the tail is, you see how the red on this tail? These two reddish ones could be hypo onyxes and then these onyxes. It's funny how they're, they're, we hit so many onyx boas here. Now, we go to this snake here, and we have a lot of reds in this snake. This is also onyx, because you see the striped tail. I would say this is hypo. Um, and we might actually have Honduran T positive in this, in this snake, because, let me see if I can put these guys back. Because look at that red on the belly right there. Now, normally I would say, you know what, maybe this is blood. This could be blood onyx. And I, if it is, I'd be very happy, because that would mean that the father proved out to be head blood but I'm just not sure. So I'm gonna have to let this grow a little bit more. Uh, that red belly is really, really nice though. It could be the T positive gene though in there. All right, let's see what else we got here. This is a really nice, I know everyone's gonna like this one. This is, <laughs> look at this, big belly. Look at this guy, He's this guy's got some nice yolk sac in him right here. That's why we keep them in the incubator so they absorb their yolk sac. We're not gonna let them out yet. This is a super onyx, no other genes. Uh, you can see how dark it is. It's, it's basically patternless. It loses its pattern. It has a leopardish-like effect if you really take a look, but 
this is by and far a, a textbook super onyx. Sorry about all these other snakes. They're a little annoying, but that's the way it goes. And if you look, see that red in there? Because onyx has red in it. If you put hypo in there, I'm going to show you a hypo super onyx in a little bit. All this darkness turns red. So you strip away the black and you get red under there. So let's take a look at the, uh, at the light box now. How's it looking for this? Is, is, is the coloration good? Yep. Okay. I'm already recording it. Okay. All right, here's the second box, the second half of the litter. Some of them you can see are still shedding. Some of them are in the water bowl here. Um, but we got some beautiful snakes here. Look at this. This is a sun glow or T positive sun glow, as we call it. That's a hypo Honduran T positive. And I got to tell you, the Honduran T positive line of, of T positive albinos happens to be one of the most beautiful. It has the most reds in it. And this is a single copy onyx. And you can see the striped tail there. And look how light that tail is. Look how beautiful the pinks are in this snake. And look at that chain linking. It almost looks like, like Pablo said this, it looks like Aztec. But that's from the onyx gene interacting with hypo and Honduran T positive. I don't see any blood in this snake at all. It's an absolutely beautiful snake. Single copy onyx. It's going to be hard to ever let this guy go because I love the pattern that it's back. I'm sure someone's going to want it. Um, really, really nice snake. Now, if we go a little deeper, I told you I wanted to show you what a super onyx or hypo super onyx looks like. So this is your super onyx, like that black snake I showed you before, except this is with the hypo gene. So the hypo gene strips away a level of, of blackness from this and you get this red snake. So, so just like leopard, if you take away, if you add hypo gene to leopard, you get a reddish looking snake like this. Same thing with the, with the super onyx hypo. You got almost a patternless snake that's got a lot of reds in it. Now to take this one step further, let's see, let's grab this one here. What I believe this is, is I believe this is a hypo Honduran T positive, super onyx, right here. So we have two copies of onyx, so it's patternless almost just with very light pattern. We put the hypogene in there, strips away a lot of the, the, the uh, black, and then we strip away almost all the black with the Honduran T positive, and we get this pinkish, reddish looking beauty right here. And we actually, it seems like we hit two of these, Pop, right? Yeah. This one's still shedding though a little bit, so I don't, it doesn't look quite as nice, but they're both, they're both the same. I don't think there's blood in here. Originally when I saw these, I said, ah, this has gotta be blood because these guys are so red, but I really think it's just the Super Onyx Hypo Honduran T positive combination. Now, if you look, this one, we're not really sure what it is because it hasn't shed yet. So it's it looks almost very similar to these guys, but it's a little different. Um, I think once it sheds, we'll get a better idea. And then we have this guy in the water bowl here, who's very similar. Oh, this, this, oh, this is Super Onyx. Hmm. This might be super onyx Honduran T positive. I'm not really sure. I got this. Let me get this, guy. this is this is a little bit of a. I'm not sure of. That's definitely super onyx, but it's got something that's taking away its uh, blackness, but not all of its blackness. So this could be hypo. I wonder. Hey, Pop. I wonder if this guy here. I guess these guys are similar. Are they similar? Yeah, I would call they're these similar, but they're not. They're not alike. I mean, this one might be Honduran T positive super onyx. This one might be hypo Hondur super onyx. So they're both super onyx. Is one is 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 got hypo possibly. One has got. <laughs> there are these guys are two characters. They're trying to climb right up Pablo's uh, pants right there. So, to me, when I just look at the, the the clutch, this one really sticks out a lot. This one's really really nice right here. But I have to say that I like the patternless ones the best right here. These super onyx. Hypo Honduran T positives. And we'll keep you guys updated as they uh, progress. They, they got big fat bells. If you notice, these little dwarf boas are, are bigger than the Colombian boas that will get huge when they're born. The dwarf boas produce big, big babies. Not a lot of them, but big. This is my biggest litter though. This is We had 11 babies here. And that's a big, that's a big litter for a dwarf boa. So I'm very happy. Everything is very healthy. 
we're going to set these guys up in their own tubs in a few days and we're going to feed them. Uh, Pop will bring probably some pinkies at the end of the week or fuzzies for these guys and I bet you they eat. So, all right. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, that was a little, a little scary with the black water dragon, but I, I think I think I'm making progress with her. I really I think she likes me. I do. I think she doesn't trust me yet 100%, but she she came out, she climbed onto my shoulder, she hung out behind my neck, she didn't scratch me, she didn't do anything aggressive. She walked around my shoulder and went back in her cage. I mean, you would think that I, I worked for six months to do that with her. So, uh, I, like I said, I think I think I shot eventually. I think it's going to get to a point where I'm going to be able to take her out and walk around with her and hold her and and, and uh, do all kinds of cool stuff with her. So that was a, a really good positive thread that we set up today with her, and uh, I'm really happy about that. I'm also really happy about that bow litter, man. That uh, came out great. I don't think we hit the blood gene in there. I, I mean, I might be wrong. I mean, who knows? Maybe Frank will look at my... Uh, the video and he'll let me know but i think i think we just have hunt i think we have some really really nice uh t positive sun glow uh super onyxes super onyx has a lot of red in it it's just a matter of stripping away the darkness and when you have the hypogene and you have honduran t positive in there you strip away almost all every single ounce of that black and you get this beautiful beautiful looking pinkish red snake and uh I, you know, as they get a little older, the, they'll, the pattern that it looks like they're almost patternless now, but they're going to get a little bit of pattern that's going to start showing through, which gives them a little bit more contrast and makes them a little cooler. So I'm looking forward to those, uh, to see how those boas develop. If anyone's interested in, in getting involved in that project, let me know. I'm sure I'll have some of those for available after they eat a couple meals. I still have all my onyx from last year that I have not even listed. So those will go up as well, probably in the next couple weeks. And that's just the way it goes. I, I really have a lot of babies from 22 that have not been listed yet. Almost my almost, almost the whole year. Uh, I just I just finished selling uh, off uh, 21s and 20s, you know, and and some 22s as well that I wasn't planning on really listing. So once now that those are gone and I'm moving those uh, over to underground this Friday, uh, we'll be posting all my high end stuff on Morph Market. Peacocks are going crazy. The UPS guys here. It's all good. If you guys enjoy these videos, please show me the love. Hit that subscribe button. Turn on those notifications. Hit that like button. Do it for the peacocks. We'll see you back tomorrow morning.